Europe is defined by the Alps, just as China is by the Qingling Mountains. 20,000 years ago, a colossal ice sheet twice the size of Jiangsu province froze the heart of Europe, burying Switzerland, northern Italy, southern Germany, and eastern France in ice. The land fell silent. The Ice Age had reached its peak. Millennia passed. As the glaciers retreated, the Alps emerged and quickly became the crown of Europe. A cradle of stunning landscapes, the Alps are often called the continent's central garden. They nourished early civilizations and helped shape the course of European history. Today, to truly grasp Europe's geography, we must begin with the Alps. Together with BYD, let's journey into the heart of the Alps. Crossing this snowy plain, we're about to witness an iconic landmark of the Alps, a classic horn peak piercing the sky. This is the Matterhorn. Now, let me take you on a climb so you can see just how steep it truly is. Its ridge is as thin as a blade with slopes often steeper than 60 degrees, making footholds hard to find. Because of this, hundreds have lost their lives attempting to climb throughout history. What force could have carved the mountain into such a fierce form? We'll come back to that later. First, let's look at its height. 4,478 meters. While the Alps are not as tall as the peaks of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which often exceeds seven or 8,000 meters, yet here we are already in a kingdom of ice and snow. Its glaciers stretched down to elevations below 3,000 meters. The Alps are a natural cradle of ice and snow. Fed by moist air from the North Atlantic current, blessed with abundant snowfall. Even more surprising, they sit at a latitude similar to Heilongjiang in China. Summers here are cool, and much of the snow never melts. Over time, it has built up into over 1,200 modern glaciers, holding enough ice to fill two and a half Three Gorges reservoirs. 20,000 years ago, at the height of the Ice Age, the Alps held nearly a thousand times more ice than today. A thousand times? What does that mean? Here where I stand, ice and snow have already filled the valleys, flattening the land into a vast white plain. 20,000 years ago, at the peak of the Ice Age, looking into the distance far beyond the horizon, almost every mountain, almost every valley was buried under ice and snow. Filling even the Sichuan Basin in China would have been no challenge. Rome was not built in one day. This great glaciation began 115,000 years ago, triggered by subtle cyclical changes in Earth's orbit. Less solar energy reached the Northern Hemisphere, global temperatures dropped, and the Ice Age descended. 20,000 years ago, at the peak of glaciation, the entire Alps were buried beneath a colossal ice sheet, up to 2,000 meters thick. Yeah, 2,000 meters! If such glaciers return, no skyscraper would survive. Major European cities, Geneva, Zurich, Innsbruck, would lie deep beneath the ice sheet. Munich, Milan, and Turin would find themselves on the glacier frontier. Hi, BYD. What's up? Open the sunshade. The blind is open. Early humans were forced to abandon the Alps. But what they didn't know was this. The glaciers were not only destroying, they were reshaping the land, quietly preparing a new home for their return. First, the ice sculpted a pastoral world. 
This is ricotta. Is it right? Yep, yep, it's perfect. Today I'm working as an apprentice. <laughs> Even today, this way of life enjoys across the Alps. Here, people live by herding sheep and cattle. In winter, cows and sheep rest quietly in their sheds, nestled deep in the valleys, safe from the howling storms. As summer returns and snow melts, they move to high pastures filled with lush alpine grass. Let's take to the skies and see just how breathtaking these valleys can be. And the force that carved them lies at their headwaters. Glaciers. 20,000 years ago, vast ice sheets spilled over the mountains, sending tongues of ice flowing down the weakest paths in the land. They carved relentlessly, slicing through the rock. Thus, glacier valleys were born. Their bottoms are wide and flat, while their sides rise steep and high, shaping a giant U in cross-section. When glacier terminus surged beyond the mountains, it was like a great dragon stretching its feet across the plains. 10,000 years ago, Earth's orbital tilt shifted once more. Sunlight returned in greater measure. Warmth swept back across the land. And the Ice Age came to an end. The valleys carved by glaciers filled with meltwater and rain, giving birth to stunning glacial lakes. Such a deep, brilliant blue reveals that this is no ordinary lake. At its deepest point, the lake plunges 425 meters. Its bed lies more than 200 meters below sea level, deep enough to stack eight towers of Pisa one atop another. These sweeping basins were carved by the glacier dragons, tirelessly scratching at the earth with their tiny toes, or rather steadily carving it away. As the glaciers retreated, rivers, grasslands, and forests rushed in to fill the valleys. Wildlife flourished, and humans returned to the Alps, rebuilding their homes in a transformed world. The Alps became the natural water tower of Europe. From its icy heights, rivers began their long descent, feeding the Po and the Rhone, the Rhine and the Danube. Along their banks, Budapest, Vienna, Milan, Bern, Geneva, and other Europe's cultural gems emerged. As the glaciers carved out deep valleys, they opened hidden corridors within the heart of the Alps, pathways that would later shape the course of European history time and again. Here lies one such mountain pass. In 1800, Napoleon led his army across this very pass. Napoleon emerged unexpectedly behind enemy lines, rewriting the fate of nations. Moreover, renowned Carthaginian general Hannibal and Roman governor Caesar, among others, utilized glacial valleys to cross the Alps, igniting the defining highlights of their lives. Millennia of changing glaciers and centuries of clashing armies would eventually mold the patchwork of nations and cultures that now cluster along the flanks of the Alps, one of Europe's richest tapestries of diversity. Moreover, during the Ice Age, mighty glaciers tore into the mountains from every direction, forging thousands of peaks, each with a face of its own, even including jagged horn peaks like the Matterhorn. By the 19th century, Europe's adventurers answered the call of the mountains. The Alps became a natural, all-around training ground for mountaineering. In the early 20th century, the first Winter Olympics were staged upon these slopes. Today, the Alps have become Europe's alpine garden, an outdoor paradise. Today, my buddy Chu Yang and I are racing each other up the Alps. Rock climbing showdown. Ready? Three, two, one, go! What do you want? Anything! Anything? Yes. <laughs> For everyday adventurers, the Alps are a gentle embrace. 
No thin air to steal your breath. No harsh altitudes to weigh you down. Railways, lodges, and cable cars carry travelers straight to the snowy heights. This is the most welcoming high mountain zone on Earth. But even as humanity's footprint grows even larger, the Alps now teeter on the edge of survival. The glaciers are far more fragile than we ever dared imagine. Can you imagine the Alps without glaciers? In recent years, the snow beneath the Matterhorn melts completely each summer. Yet just a century ago, a massive glacier still flowed here, unmelted year-round. Now, scientists warn that with global warming, the Alps could lose half of their glaciers by 2050, and nearly all by the end of the century. These glaciers once ruled the Alps during the Ice Age, a hundred, even a thousand times their current scale. They carved through the mountains, leaving behind a kingdom of towering peaks. Then came Homo sapiens. In just 10,000 years, we built farms, raised herds, founded villages and cities, laid roads and railways. But from now, in just a few decades, we might say goodbye to the glaciers, one by one. In the years ahead, many snow-covered peaks will lose their crowns, no longer draped in white, but stripped to bare stone under the sun. In the years ahead, People may only be able to tell the next generation that there once was a glacier here. How magnificent and grand it was. In the years ahead, the sapphire lakes, the emerald rivers that ring the Alps, will lose their glacial lifeblood. For the Alps, it is only another transformation. They have witnessed countless shifts between ice and warmth. They remain indifferent to global warming. But for us, there is no stepping aside. The loss of glaciers is not just the fading of a landscape. It means more droughts, more sudden floods, and a future full of unknowns. This is a global upheaval we must all face. And yet, there is hope. In the Alps, people are already taking action. Low-carbon living is becoming a shared vision. More nations, more companies are joining the cause, harnessing science and technology to reshape how we move, how we power our lives. And if the choices of 8 billion people converge, we may yet hold the power to reshape the future, to preserve the Ice Age's gifts in the Alps, so they remain forever majestic, forever radiant.